my friends. Today, we are starting Building for Absolute Beginners. I am going to walk you through every single tedious little aspect of building a sweet, sweet, it's hard not to swear sometimes, home. A uh, cool, a, a rad home. If you're an absolute beginner, this video is completely for you, so let's go! Okay, to begin building, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to build mode, which is this little house in the corner. I'm not sure... If you're on mobile, it might be in a different place, but regardless of what you're playing on, you're gonna see the little build button, and then you're gonna click it. Now this brings up your little screen here, and you're gonna click on build mode. Now, you should have a grid like this, and depending on if you've bought in any game passes or whatever, you can go down to the basement, or you'll probably start off just on this level. You do need a game pass to go up, but when you do get it, you're allowed to build, I believe it's up to five floors. But we're going to start on the very first floor. Okay, so build mode. We're going to start with this toolbar here. There's arrows for undo and redo. So if you build something, we're going to start with a wall because that's simple. If you undo it, it undoes it. Pretty, pretty easy. You can, however, delete the wall as well with this delete button, but you do not get the same amount of money back. So it was 12, how much was it to build this wall? Let's do this. All right, we're gonna build a wall for $32. And if you click undo, you do. it doesn't exactly show it, but you get the exact $32 back. However, if you click the delete button and you go to delete it, you'll see you only get $22 back. So for the rest of your building lifetime, remember if you can undo it, undo it. Don't delete it because you will be losing money every single time you change something. That undo button is going to be extremely important if you're testing out colors or you're testing out whether you like a roof or whatever in the future. So just get in the habit now that you undo don't delete. The grid size, there are three of them here, as you can see on the screen. I'm going to quickly go through those because those are going to be extremely important to you as well. The largest size here is basically for building walls and building your big structural thing like paths and, and flooring, everything that's kind of your construction style stuff. A lot of the time, it's also useful if you're placing uh, like pot lights on the ceiling. I see a lot of people who place lights with the tiny grid and they just, they look like they're all over the place. They look scattered and they don't look clean. Where if you have the large grid on, I'll actually show you. Let's grab a pot light here and we'll go into bird's eye view. So now we're just looking down at our plot. We're in large right now, so you can see that it's a lot easier to place them in a nice line. Whereas if you're in the tiny one, which I see people do a lot of time, you, you basically have to guess where center line is. And after a while of doing that, when you get out of it and you walk into your home, it, it's a disaster. It looks gross. It looks messy and it's I it's one of my absolute pet peeves I hate it so we're gonna undo so we don't lose our money here make sure that when you place those lights that are on top of the ceiling anybody can do it and it'll look fantastic as long as you're in the large grid so that's your first lesson right there on building now the arrows here I already explained are just to change levels I probably wouldn't worry about that right now until you get either the basement pass or the multiple floors pass. 
we will probably discuss that later as we're going to build a little house together here to practice. Now the toggle object collision, I don't think you guys will have that unless you get advanced placing. And to be completely honest, I have not found a use for it yet. If I, I'll do a little research and I'll put some right here on the screen if I find information on it. But to this date, I've built many, many, many houses and I have never bothered with it. Tried it a couple times, but couldn't see a difference. So I'm, I'm gonna skip that for now as I'm not exactly sure. The toggle roof button, however, is very important. All it does is it either removes your roof while you're building or places it back on. So if we put a little house here and we go into build and a roof, we'll just put the most simple roof that we can find. Great. There's our roof. So if we're building and we want to get inside to build and you click toggle roof, it's going to remove it. That's just so you can see inside and it's great for decorating smaller rooms like this one. And if you want to see what your house looks like, then you just click the roof button again and it will put it back on. If for some reason you're trying to toggle your roof and it doesn't seem to be coming on or off, you may be on the wrong floor. Like I'm clicking it right now and nothing's happening. That's because I'm on the second floor and there's no roof up here to be toggled. So that would be your problem. Just play with your levels a little bit. It never hurts to click some buttons. I mean, you can always undo, you can always fix stuff in the future. I suggest you just kind of build a house at first just to get used to it. The undo button does about 20 clicks, I'd say. So even if you want to just keep playing around with up to 20 movements, delete it. I mean, oh, there, my own problem. Don't delete it. Undo it. Try again. Undo it until you get the hang of it. That's something you can totally do without, you know, sacrificing any of your hard-earned money. Hopefully hard-earned and you weren't just begging. Because that's the most annoying thing ever. But anyways, I'm moving on. So, the next one is the scale tool. I have this because I have advanced placing. You probably don't. If you do, great. Good for you. All it does is different things that you are going to use for decor or windows. Basically, you can just scale them to fit your needs. If we have this book here and we're like, wow, those are some big books. I want them smaller. You just click on that. And then it just gives you the ability. Oh, you usually want to go into the smallest grid for that. You can just make them really big, really small, yada, yada. You can do that with pillars, decor, windows, all kinds of different things. So that is one benefit. Advanced placing is my favorite game pass. If you are going to play this game mainly to build, it's probably the most important one that you could get. If you're thinking about game passes, that's probably the best one to really get a proper realistic looking build. On to the next is these three dots. And basically you have the, if you have advanced placing, I believe it will, you can change your time. This is great if you want to see what your house is looking like in the dark. It just gives you different options of basically just a view, a different viewpoint for your home while you're building. I use it for outdoor lighting mainly. There is the automatic, which will toggle it to the time on the screen, I believe, but I always keep it on full sun. The bulldoze button, if you build something and you absolutely decide you hate it, you've gone way past the undo button and you just want to clear it, you want to get rid of it, you click on that. What it does is gives you options. So you can go into structure or objects. Hang on, I'm gonna close this door. Somebody's mowing their lawn. Stop mowing your lawn, I'm trying to film a video here. Ugh, so inconsiderate, right? Back to bulldozing a plot. So you have your structure section here, which is all of the, you know, doors, walls, paths, pillars. You can click on that and it'll say keep. You can do that with as much things as you want and it will not delete those items. Objects, there's a lot more options in here. This is where you're gonna find your vehicle. 
A lot of people will keep their vehicle when they start over because they're expensive to buy and there's no need to delete them. Then you click continue. It will say, you know, are you absolutely sure? And then if you click yes, I'll click it just to show you. It's going to have you type in your username, not the name that shows up on your screen here, but your actual Roblox username. You just type that in and then it will delete everything for you and you'll have a complete clear plot. I did a video on whether a lot of people will manually go and delete stuff like this. Uh, I did do a video on whether that's better or bulldoze, so you can go check that out. I will link it actually right here in the top corner. Bing! Ah, oh, the beauty of filmmaking. All right. Now we've gone through our toolbar. We're going to go through this bottom little section here. The paint palette here is how you change the colors of things. Everything starts out generally as this medium stone gray, but that's just the beginning. So you can click on anything that you want to color and you have your color bar and your material bar. Colors, there's quite a few obviously. Um, some of the popular ones are fossil, linen, flint, if you want to go more of the, I don't know, like blush there's these kind of light pinks down here these are cashmere works really good as a gold these are all your browns which look great with wood um i generally i like this rust and this red area but it just depends on what your what style you're looking for so what you do is you pick your color we'll pick linen because that's a super popular one and then you can move to material and there's a ton of different materials. Now, the, the one thing I wanna mention about materials first off is just because they say something that doesn't apply to the object that you're, you're painting doesn't mean you can't use it. For example, this, this says ice. Just because it says ice doesn't mean I can't use it on a wall. It's just the name of the, of the texture. So don't be afraid to like, you know, make your, your walls ice or grass or, or sand, it, it, it makes no difference in the long run. There's a foil wall. Woo, woo, that's shiny. Anyways, we're gonna go to a popular choice for linen and we will do wood planks. And then afterwards you can see that you're, there's a price right here. So not only do you have to build the wall or, or add you know the structure or the window or the roof but then you have to pay to color it and that's where things get expensive and that's where the undo button can be really 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 useful because say you you know you're like I love this and then you are on Pinterest and you're like oh my god it's the wrong yada yada don't delete it just undo it it's so important to save your money especially when you're a beginner next is the copy tool the copy tool is good if you well there's a couple different reasons for one sometimes it's easier just to copy this instead of find it in the build section but it also has some great let me pull up a door here it has some great uses um to save you time basically so if i have painted this door I'll paint it this color and I'll change that. Okay, so I've painted this door and I want that exact same door. Instead of having to go back into doors and start over with the paint palette, I can just click the copy, click, and then I can move and paste it and it will stay on my mouse. So I can put as many as I want and there will all be an exact copy of that door with the coloring and the material. So that'll come in handy, especially if you if you deck out a window with curtains and shutters on the outside, and you want those as well to move to you know spot to spot. Then you don't have to like manually make each window identical. You can just click copy and move it over and place all your windows. So that's what that is for. It also comes in handy if you create like a little garden plant that has multiple different plants in it you can just copy and move that around instead of individually placing we'll get to all of that later but for now it's just easier to show you to use it on a door simple just keep it simple okay speaking of keeping it simple 
we are done with that area. The X will take you out of build mode back into game mode. Oh, look at that. I forgot my roof again. I am notorious for that. Uh, that X bar caused me a lot of annoyance when I first started building because I continually clicked it instead of clicking the back button. So you just got to get used to that. Okay, now we are going to go into the build area. All right, you've got a whole bunch of options here. It's intimidating at first, but once you get to know the, the flow of it, it's quite simple. We're gonna just do some simple stuff today and then in the part two, we'll go into more detail with our home we're gonna build together. So the first thing you need, obviously, is walls. So you're gonna click on walls. Now, if you know how to bird's eye view like this, it's super, super easy to do a layout. I see a lot of people trying to do the layouts like this and it, I just, I can't understand why. So take the time, take a second to figure out how to go into bird's eye view before you do this. And the grid sizes, um, I would just keep it on large. It's just easier for the bigger items. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a little room. All you do is click and drag and then let go. And there's your wall. Now, a lot of people make their houses. <laughs> when people first start, they use up like their entire plot to make their house. And it just looks like a huge community center or, or a big gym or like a Costco. It's just a big, huge box. That is not what we're going for here. So you don't need to do that. If you do need some like size comparisons, a lot of the time I'll go in and just grab this couch. It just kind of shows you like how long this wall actually is. And if you're if you're struggling with that that whole measurement, look around your own house. Look at your couch. How much wall is there, you know? Do some just some basic kind of ratios and figure it out. But I'm telling you right now, you don't need a huge house to start. All right, let's go back. I'll probably go on a couple little rants like that. So we build our first wall. You can stop midway while doing a wall and then continue to connect. But I'm going to tell you why that's not a great idea. The reason why is because now when we go to color it, the computer is, is counting it as two, I'll show you, as two different sections of wall. So it's actually gonna charge you twice to paint the same wall. And not only that, when you go to put a window in, the windows, the way that they sit, I'll show you, is on the grid running up. So it's it won't let you put a window here because it's a connection. It'll only let you put a window where it's a fluid wall. So I'll give you an example. Windows are great in either this large grid size or the second one. Don't ever place them in the tiny grid unless you absolutely have to kind of wiggle one in to fit somewhere. But that's where you start getting, you know, I see houses where the windows, I can't even fit one in here because of that wall. The windows look like this on the front of the house. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, 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 not good. So that's another reason we avoid that tiny grid. The tiny grid comes later when it's decor time. So we want to place our windows and we really want one in the center, but because of that, it's not going to let you. Now I, I, I've had people ask why they can't place the windows in any specific place. This is the number one reason is they've divided up the wall. So what you want to do is you're going to have to get your delete button unless unless you've only gotten this far and you're gonna have to delete the wall go back into walls and just pull it across as one fluid one that's super important the only reason you would want to we'll call it dissect a wall is if you had like another room connected to the outside so say say I've got a little room here we'll call it like we'll just say it's a little bathroom and then this is going to be the outside 
well, this wall is the same wall as this, but this wall is going to be painted with exterior colors. So then you can connect it like that so your exterior wall won't run into your bathroom wall. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's something that took me a little bit to understand, but now I can uh, now I can divide up the wall so this is, you know, like a stone exterior and then this inside can just be paint. Right? Because if we don't do that and it's a solid wall, you're not going to be able to have that division. You're going to try to paint the outside and it's just going to go all the way over and you're going to have stone in your bathroom and it's going to be stressful and you're going to hate the game. You're going to go right back to adopt me and we don't want that. So let's put our wall, <laughs> let's put our wall, fluid wall back. Dun, dun, dun. Now we're going to add on. Let's add a another room here um let's go let's add a little outlet here and you don't have to build a boxy house you can put these little outlets anywhere like all houses are different shapes it's very rare that you get a house in real life that's just a box so don't be afraid to you know add some add some uniqueness to it, add some design elements. In the end, they don't look ridiculous. They actually look really nice in your house, especially if you put like a fireplace in here or a little TV set or, or your kitchen, your counters fit right back into the wall and it looks really nice. So let's add a little section here. there all right good enough now if we want now we need some doors we really need to have access to this other room because you know no harry potter running through walls stuff here so dun, 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 dun. we're gonna go cancel to the wall and now we're back in this area and we're gonna click doors now one thing about this if you want a different room but still openly connected to the other room you don't want to leave you don't want to build a wall that's just like this this is a big no-no first of all it looks unfinished second of all when you start placing your flooring and stuff it's just going to be a big disaster it's going to mess with your roof because the game is not registering this as a full separate room now it's registering this as a full room with random walls so what you want to do if you do want it open is put a full wall so when you do your layout just you know close off all your rooms make sure they're completely closed off and then we're gonna go into our doors and instead of choosing a, an actual door you can just choose a door frame and then you add it in and that gives you access open access to that next room it's still you know an open concept style but it will still register as two separate rooms with a door separating them so that's really important this one i'll show you this one is my favorite traditional wide because it gives an open view of the other room but it looks really clean and polished and it just looks nice so let's add a front door to our little house we're building here um i will just do this cheap one standard window door okay do i want it here no that looks a little weird try to avoid the front door entrances jutting out too much unless you're gonna kind of even them out with pillars but i don't want to do that so let's put our front door right actually we can put it right he no right there bam love it there's our door so we're gonna paint it paint palette click on it there's three different colors it doesn't exactly it doesn't tell you what the colors are for so sometimes if it's not obvious like this red you just gotta I'll, I'll click on the blue and then do a like a neon color because it'll show up 
and then I know what exactly I'm changing the color of. Windows look great in medium stone gray. That's the most natural color for a window, but you can, however, do any different colors. You can kind of get a stained glass look with all of these. Um, but typically I will change all my windows to medium stone gray, or if I want it really bright, you can do a white, but I just find, I don't know. That's just my personal preference to keep them all, all the same. And then this, I like to do mid gray so you can actually see it. And then there we go. Now we have a little setup. We've got a walkthrough, we've got a door, and then we're gonna do floors. And then we're gonna end this video and we will start next time on the windows and the roof and stuff like that. So we're gonna go back into the build tab and we're gonna click on floor. Now, to put a floor down, very simply as you can see it says automatic placement in this floor section so all you would do is click and you'll see it kind of generate on its own tell you the price and if you're happy with it right click is buy so there's your floor very very easy however if you want to do a manual one say you for some reason you wanted this floor to be to have a, a, a different center a different style center then you can change this to manual with manual you can see you have these points you actually choose where the floor is gonna be so I'll pull it we'll just do we'll do half and half for some reason in, in a triangular way so you pull your points and then you click and once it's able to connect you've got enough points it'll show it and if you're happy then you just right click to buy I'm gonna do that again over here. There we go. It looks the same right now, but later when we go to color it, it will show up as two different ones. Now there is a button here, da, 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 um, paths. The paths, I don't understand why they even exist in this game. I will tell you right now, it's better to just never use them. They, they are horrible to, to build with they're hard to you cannot overlap them without them starting to glitch they're fine now but as soon as you put any color on them they're gonna glitch like crazy you cannot place items on them so it say you, you had this path and then you want to put a nice stone walkway over top you can't they're just a disaster so if you trust me enough to follow my advice which I'm asking you please do trust me I think I know what I'm doing I think don't even ever bother using a path if you need a, like some kind of walkway or garden or whatever just use the floor tool it's so much more usable and flexible with placing things on it and everything and you can make it whatever you want so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a path from the front door to our mailbox so I'm gonna go into manual because this will not recognize, there's no room here. There's no four walls to close it off. So it won't even allow you to do an automatic floor. So you gotta go into manual and we're gonna click and add our points. There, that looks good enough for now. And then we click and there it is. Now I'm gonna move my mailbox. You can, you can move those wherever you want along this front area off of there and go back into floor. And now we're just gonna add a little garden. So manual, and we'll start the garden here. So we're gonna click our points. If you want it to go around the corner, that's totally doable too. You just make sure you put your points like this so it's wrapping around and not going inside your house. You don't want to ever overlap floors. That is an absolute disaster. I see it all the time. Make sure you don't. If you do, click the undo button and redo it. So it needs me to put that point right there to keep it on the outside. Okay, that's where I want my garden. So I'm gonna say yes, good, love it, done. Now, everything's white, we want to color it. So we go into our color palette. Let's color this walkway first. Bam, now it's colored. For our garden, 
Uh, you can change it to most people do brown because you know dirt brown. I like to mix it up sometimes. I do flint sometimes. I do hurricane gray or linen. It honestly all looks the same. A lot of my houses I use these colors and it's almost like a mulch. It looks like a mulch after and I really like that look. But again, be creative. Do whatever you want. The best dirt is grass. <laughs> that sounds weird, but it's true. The best dirt material, looking material, is the grass. So I'll do it a regular color that most people use, brown, just to show you. If you're wondering what this color is for, it's for underneath. Once you get two stories or you're doing a, you know, a floor up here on the second level, then this is what it shows up underneath. But for now, just leave it. There we go. We've got our little garden bed. And now if we come in here, we will do, let's do something different. Lily white and this is planks long is very popular for floors. It looks fantastic once you're out of build mode. So we'll do that. And then in here's where we did that funky thing going on just to show you. I wouldn't recommend cutting your room in half like that, but for the sake of showing you guys, that's what we're going to do. Oh, goodness. Um, should it be a wildly contrasting color? Oh, no. Okay, let's do it. Wow. There we go. So your garden, because you didn't put a path down, once you go, once we get here into gardening, you're able to just put the plants right over top. Whereas if it was a path, it would not allow you. So that's just my reasoning behind that. So you can play with the floor. Um, the reason that they, and the reason they have the manual is so that you can do that. A lot of the time. People just do the, the, the one style and then that's it. But you can totally play around with this. I have made so many different kind of like tile, tile styled floors with just the floor tool. And you can do, you can add like a path and then add stones over top of it from the garden section. There's so many things you can do with the flooring tool. Um, I would say, you know, explore a little bit and try something out because not a lot of people do it. They don't utilize this tool at all. It's very basic uses. So that's one thing that you could have a little, little step ahead with. Other than that, I think we're going to end this video today and you've got the basis for your toolbar, you've got your walls, your doors, and your floors. And next time we will continue and I hope you learned something new today. Practice what you've learned today and I will see you soon with episode two. And thank you all for joining me. Uh, again, I am still, oh, okay. I am still fairly new on YouTube here. So you watching or subscribing, commenting, whatever that little bell thing everybody yells at you to do all of that it means the world to me right now and i am so so grateful that you are here if you have any comments or questions please please post them below and i will get back to you all right bye bye